Hey everybody, thanks for checking out my lesson. This is uh, lesson 8 in the series, a 251 in the style of Grant Green. Um, in today's lesson, we're going to show you one of Grant's uh, most common devices to play over a 251. And uh, hopefully, again, you learn it, uh, digest it, play it in, in your uh, music as best as you can, move it around to all keys. Um, it's really the secret of playing jazz. I mean, really, uh, gosh, you know, every, every uh, jazz standard is two five ones in it and if you can negotiate two five ones then you pretty much uh, got the the whole um, jazz bag together. Um, I will uh, make one note uh, on the voiceover during the lesson um, I talk about the resolution to the E note uh, I actually had uh, I misspoke and and said uh, that I was using my third finger when you can actually see on the video that I'm using my second finger uh, Again, those of you that are watching the video, you'll, you'll pick that up anyway. Okay, so uh, thanks again for checking out the video, and let's get started. Okay, here we are, lesson eight, uh, 251 in the style of Grant Green. In today's lesson, we're gonna play 251 in the key of C, so that's gonna include D minor, D minor 7 or D minor 9, uh, any kind of D minor, to G7, which is the 5 chord. Here I'm playing a 13, to some kind of C major 7. Alright, so there's C6, 9. I don't know if you can see those chords that well. Sorry for the glare. Um, Anyway, so D minor 7, G7, to C major will be the vamp. And uh, let me go ahead and create the phrase. I'll play the riff and then I'll explain what happens here. So we got a 1, 2, a 1, 2, uh, uh. See if that works. Here's the riff. Again. So let's explain what's happening here. Pretty simple concept. Mm -hmm. We have uh, this cool kind of, uh, I guess it's a 16th note triplets and then an eighth note. And um, what I'm doing is I'm starting on the E note, which is the second string. Um, and that is at the fifth fret. And I'm playing, plucking that note with my right hand, picking finger hammering down and then pulling off right and that's my 16th note triplet and then I'm landing on the third string the D note and that is seventh fret third finger all right each one of those phrases uh, takes the span of a quarter note so we're gonna play four of those phrases over the uh, D minor 7 chord. Over the G7 chord, we're going to move that phrase up a minor third. And then the resolution is to E, the third of C major 7. And that E note is found on the third string um, in the ninth fret. And I'm, I'm landing on my third finger. Puts me in perfect uh, blues position. Right? So in slow motion, again, here's the Grant phrase. Right? Um, now, again, my whole point with these um, lessons is to not bog us down with too much 
theory, but but essentially, um, what you can what you can take away from this idea is that um, we're playing the notes that we're playing over the G7 chord are G. We're playing A flat, which is the flat nine, G7, and we're playing F, which is the flatted seventh. So we're playing the flatted seventh, the root, and the flat nine of G7. Okay, um, Grant, I can't claim to speak for Grant, but um, I've transcribed enough of his playing to know that this is, this is a device that Grant would use quite often, and that is taking, uh, you know, that Dorian scale, although I'm not sure he would call, call it that, but which is the scale that belongs for the two chord. That's D Dorian, and moving that scale up a minor third, and and that scale works perfectly for an altered for a G7 chord. It it um, gives you a bunch of great altered notes on the G7, um, heightening the tension that's already there in that two five one chord progression, which again is the point. If we're if we're um, trying to play the function of the song as opposed to chasing the chords around, um, we have a little more latitude when it comes to our note choices. If we're, if we're constructing our melody based upon tension and resolution, then um, at those points of tension, meaning the five chord, that's the point where we can, we can begin to alter that five chord and get a lot of those great notes in there, right? Everybody learned that the Jimi Hendrix chord, right? Okay, so simply put, we've got a phrase over the two chord, move it up a minor third, and look for the closest resolution. Okay, if you have any questions about this lesson or any of the other lessons that you've watched, please feel free to contact me at belltowertrio.com and I'll see you next time. Okay, thanks.